everybody. It is a beautiful day out today, so I thought that I would work outside, um, at least for a little while. I think my computer's probably going to get too hot, but I'm outside. The pool is open. It's still kind of dirty, but it's open. Um, Harper is sleeping behind me. So, you know, all is right with the world. I hope all of you are doing well and that you are excited to have some beautiful weather for a change. Uh, it is actually so warm, I'm not sure how long I'll last out here because I'm a little hot. Um, but today for Living Environment, for both my ninth and my 10th graders, we're going to be doing the same thing. We are going to look at some of the ecology notes. So on your Google Classroom, you're going to notice that I posted this document here. Uh, it says Ecology and Ecosystems. It is a pretty long document. I'm not going to lie. Oh, it's 10 pages. We are not going to do all 10 pages at all, probably, but we're definitely not going to do it in this video. Um, but we are going to skip around a little bit, so please make sure that you're following along with the video just because I think you'll be confused. Um, I didn't want to edit this document because it is a document I would use in a normal course of, uh, you know, real normal school, not online school. So I don't want to edit it and not be able to undo it. So I left it as is, but we as, a, as an online learning community are going to bounce around a little bit. Um, so don't forget for to add your add this to your distance learning checklist so it's actually different numbers for living environment one and for living environment two so for my ninth graders for living environment and you're probably getting close to oh yeah we are out of um, boxes so you can here's how you do this you highlight the whole row and if you highlight a couple of rows you can insert row below that's what you want so you right click and you do insert row below and then you can um i do want that centered my keyboard's hot probably it's going to be number 15 and then it's going to be ecology notes and we're going to focus on oh, we're going to focus on food chains today and it's a google doc okay um, so that's for the ninth grade, it's number 15. For the 10th graders, it's a little different because your 10th graders, your number nine assignment or activity was like three different activities all in one because it was that long state lab. Yeah, so you can see I have part one, part two, part three, part four. So you guys are only up to activity number 12, but it's going to be the same thing. Ecology notes, uh, concentrating on food webs. I'm sorry, food chains today and it is in a Google Doc. Okay, so make sure you add that to your distance learning checklist. In your note packet, you are going to, I think we're gonna scroll past this. Do, 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 do. Last week you should have done the vocabulary, so hopefully you have a, a general understanding of what an abiotic factor is, what a biotic factor is, and that kind of stuff, which is why I am um, scootering along we are going to start right here energy and ecosystems so go ahead it's on page three energy and ecosystems and i'm going to get to that spot in my powerpoint and we will walk through some of these slides together so energy in ecosystems there are two ways that organisms get energy uh, one is from solar energy and the other one is from consuming nutrition so solar energy obviously comes from the sun. There are only certain types of organisms that can use solar energy, and you and I are not one of them. Um, the other way of getting energy is to consume food. That's what we do. That's what most organisms do. The only organisms that are able to um, get energy from the sun are organisms that are plants that have chloroplasts that do photosynthesis. Okay. So if you see here, solar energy comes into our producers, your producers are your plants, they produce a different type of energy, and then the other organisms eat that and cycle the energy through the ecosystem. So again, this is something that you would have done in your vocab, autotrophs are cell feeders, we're going to kind of blow through this a little quickly. Uh, the way to remember this is autotrophs are plants, it's, this is your key down here, aka producers, uh, they're plants. So I've given you the formula for photosynthesis here. Um, if you need to pause the video, you can pause the video so you can write this stuff down. But the big key here is that autotrophs automatically make their own food. Heterotrophs are everything else. Animals are heterotrophs. So all of those types of organisms have to take in their own food. And you might be saying, listen, Bartone, I've been home for 10 weeks. I've been making my food all 10 weeks because nothing's open, can't go anywhere, blah, blah, blah. 
you are not making your food inside your cells. You are making your food on your kitchen counter or, you know, wherever else you make your food in your living room, your dining room, I don't know where you people cook, but whatever. Um, all of that, if it's made outside of your body, yes, you are physically making your food, but you're not creating the food internally, which is what an autotroph will do. Heterotrophs must eat their food. So obviously they have to get it from someplace else um, and they will eat their food. Uh, they might be herbivores that eat plants only. They might be carnivores that eat animals only. There's also um, omnivores, which I believe is on a later slide, and those will eat both. Most of us humans are omnivores because we eat both plants and animals. Some people only eat plants. There are some people that only eat animals, but I bet you they, they're much fewer and further between because a lot of things have plants in them. Uh, you know what a carnivore is. If you need to pause the video to write this down, these are different types of carnivores. Uh, herbivores, here we go, same thing. Herbivores are your plant eaters. Uh, I always learned about herbivores when I was learning about dinosaurs as a kid. Uh, and then you have, like I said, your omnivores. So here's a picture that is a good example of the kinds of things you would expect in a producer category, a consumer category, and then of course your decomposers are like your fungi and mushrooms and stuff like that. Decomposers break down dead organisms. Again, feel free to pause the video just so you can write this down. You don't need me to wait in the video. Uh, we're going to skip that. So, food chain versus a food web. Your activity today is actually a little beyond this video. So, your food chain illustrates the relationship between a predator and a prey. And it shows what eats what. So, if you look at this picture here, you're going to see that the flower has an arrow pointing to the caterpillar. That means that the flower gives energy to the caterpillar. That's what the uh, arrow signifies. It shows um, direction of energy movement, not what eats what. So the caterpillar gives energy to the frog because the frog's going to eat the caterpillar. The frog gives energy to the snake because the snake's going to eat the frog. And then the owl will give, or I'm sorry, the snake will give energy to the owl after the owl eats the snake. So it's not necessarily, the arrows don't actually signify what's eating what, it's really signifying the movement of energy. Okay, so here's one that's a food web. It's a little more complicated, but you have always on the bottom, the first thing is always the um, uh, plants, always, different types of producers. And then what kinds of herbivores eat those producers, and then what kinds of maybe omnivores and carnivores eat those herbivores, and so on and so forth. So you can see on the side here, all oftentimes they call them consumers. That's your, we call them first level or primary consumers. That's the green ones here. Those are consumers that eat plants. The secondary consumers, which is in the pink box, are your second row here, your skunk, aardwolf, and cactus wren. These are consumers that eat consumers that eat plants. And then your last one is your tertiary. That's the purple background. These are consumers that eat consumers that eat consumers that eat plants, if that makes any sense. We call them tertiary. Oops. Okay, I'm going to skip that for now. Um, okay, in most ecosystems, energy flows from the sun to the autotrophs, which are your plants, and then to the heterotrophs, which are the rest of us. Um, so as this happens, there is a lot of energy loss. So only 10% of what we get from, only 10% of the energy from any given organism is passed on to the next organism. So it's a little bit confusing. We're not going to do that page yet. But basically what that means is that uh, the sun gives energy to the plants. The plants, when let's say a bunny comes along and eats the plant, the bunny is only going to get 10% of the energy that that plant had. 10% of that energy goes on to the bunny. And the rest of that energy, the other 90%, is lost as heat to the atmosphere. Now something comes along and eats that bunny. Maybe it's a fox. I don't know. Maybe it's a fox. So the fox comes along and eats the bunny. Now the fox is only going to get 10% of what the bunny, the energy the bunny had. But remember, the bunny only had 10% of what the grass gave it. So now you're down to 1%. And then as you work your way up the food chain, you the organism gets less and less energy from what it eats, which is why sometimes you might hear that um, like plants are healthier foods and they're healthier foods in theory because they provide you more energy. Um, than, uh, than an organism that would be further up the food chain. So for your activity today, you'll see that I have posted something called a drawing, a Google drawing, and I'm just going to open up one. It's going to look like this when you open it, hopefully. I just got a new Wi-Fi router, so it's 
might be a little delayed because I'm outside. Okay, so it looks like this. There'll be controls here that load. Um, and basically what I want you to do is in this blank canvas here, you're going to create a food chain, just one food chain. That's it. So just one plant, one animal that eats that plant, one more animal that eats that plant. You have to have four organisms on there. And the first one absolutely has to be a plant. But you can have a little fun with it because you can insert, insert images. You go click insert image. Uh, unless you happen to have them on your computer, you're going to search the web. Uh, and you can pull up pictures of organisms that you want to use. Now, I would also love for you to go outside and take a picture of your own grass, your own shrubs, whatever your, whatever plants you have in your yard and use your pictures from your stuff. And then if you don't happen to be able to catch the picture of the bunny eating that, that's fine. Um, or anything else, that's totally fine. But you're going to add in your pictures. I'm going to move a little closer to the house and see if that helps. I didn't select you, so go away. Come on. Oh my god, I think my computer's gonna explode. It's too hot. Okay, so take two on um, how to make a food chain. My apologies that my computer almost blew up. I needed to give it some time off. Um, so in your Google Classroom assignment, you should have a Google drawing attached to it. The icon for the Google drawing is looks like this. I'm actually going to name it um, food chain activity. That's not how you spell activity. Activity. There we go. Okay. So that's what it will look like. Let's see if you can, let's see if you can, here we go. Act, there we go. Holy cow. Okay. Not only did the computer go up, but apparently I can't spell anymore. So, um, in order to make your food chain, you're, remember, you absolutely have to start with plants. Plants, 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 plants. Um, you could throw a sun in there. It's always nice to have a sun, although the sun's not technically part of the food chain. Um, you're going to go to insert image right here. And again, you're going to search the web. If you end up taking your own pictures, because like you're out in the yard and you're going to use a particular plant that you have in the yard, that's awesome. Um, you'll just have to email it to yourself or send it to yourself to get it onto your computer. And then instead of doing um, search the web, you'll do upload from the computer. I think the dogs think I'm talking to someone. Probably just me. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, so you're going to click. Let's say I think that before we we searched for a rabbit. I'm gonna move my face. Um, this guy looks kind of like the guy who keeps hanging out in my yard still. Why? Why are you unable to do this? Why are you not being nice to me? That's nice. Okay. Maybe it's something wrong with that picture. Let's try this one. Yeah, there we go. All right. Um, obviously, you guys shrink them down, so you just drag them. Whoa. Nothing's cooperating today. There we go. You just shrink them down. So we're going to have the bunny. Uh, maybe you're going to have a... Move my face again. The sun. You could just do like a cartoon of the sun too. Yeah, I like the sun. Ooh, yeah, it's good. <clears throat> it's good stuff. Okay, so again, you just will make it smaller. Uh, and then you're going to want to put arrows in, right? So you're going to have to, you're showing the arrows are going to show the movement of, um, hello, brain? There we go. Um, the arrows are going to show the movement of energy, okay? So you can do a couple of different things. You can, let's see, can you, yep. So if you click on this icon here, it says line, but there's like a, a little drop down here. It says select a line. You can insert an arrow. So then when you're ready, you're just going to click and drag it and watch what happens. Boop, there it is. You can, if you want to go up here and make the arrow bigger, I believe it's this one. You can make it a little bigger. There we go. You can, if you would like to change the color, you can make it red. You can make it, I'm going to make it purple because I like purple. Well, you could make two of them. Um, so that's how you do that. And then if you like that one, you can just, um, if you want to do control C to copy it, 
uh, and then you can use it for the rest of your organisms. Now, my arrow from the sun to the bunny is incorrect. Hopefully you know why. This bunny right here has no chloroplasts and cannot do photosynthesis. So I guess the, the bunny will be in the sun, but it's not going to matter. Okay, so your job here is to make four, uh, make one food chain. Create one food chain that must include at least, it could be more if you want, at least four organisms, okay? And remember, of course, to always, always, always start with your plants. Uh, and the sun does not count as an organism, so don't be thinking you're getting away with something there. Currently on this page right now, I only have one organism. This does not count as an organism. It's like this big thing in the sky or in the atmosphere. It is not going to be counted as an organism. Okay, um, so good luck with that, and I hope that you enjoy it. Uh, hopefully I'll see you soon. Enjoy the weather, but don't take your electronics out there. It's too hot. Okay, bye guys.